And so, it was nearing Christmas time, and all the villagers were excited, especially the young villagers. As for the last few days, there had been a heavy snowstorm consuming their village. And it was finally over, leaving the village covered in a thick blanket of snow. And so, for that reason, all those young villagers were outside playing in the magical snow. As they were making snow angels, having snowball fights, and building snowmen, it was a lot of fun. And all the older villagers were just happy to see the younglings playing so much outside. In fact, they even decided to let the young villagers play throughout the night outside, as they just knew how rare the snow was in their small, isolated village. And they just didn't want to let that go to waste. However, what they didn't know was that that night would change not just their lives, but the lives of millions of villagers forever. As once those young villagers had finished up with their snowball war, they decided to all work together in order to create the perfect snowman. And so, they all worked together to roll an individual snowball into a giant block of snow. And then, once they did that, they did it again, but for a slightly smaller snow block. And then, once they had the second block, they rolled out another snowball on the ground to create their final block of snow. And then they piled those three snow blocks onto one another to create the body and face of their snowman. And so after that they needed to decorate their snowman. And so for that reason they began to venture to the smallest spruce tree that they could find, where they then ripped two branches off it so that they could add arms to their snowman. And then, after that, they walked along the frozen riverbed by their village, looking out for gravel. And then, once they saw some, they began to mine it, attempting to gather flint. Now, this all took them several hours to do, as the flint was rather heavy for them, but Eventually, after a few hours of strenuous hard work, they were able to collect 14 pieces of flint. And with that, they were then able to add buttons to their snowman, thus giving him a suit. As well as that, they also gave their snowman a smile and two small eyes. And so, their distinguished snowman was now complete. And so after that, all those young villagers began to play with that snowman, as they told stories to him and showed him their houses and played snowball fights with him. And so all was good. But then those villagers began to notice they were starting to get rather bright in that forest. Now that shocked them, as they thought that they had only been out for a few hours, and so they just couldn't believe that the sun was rising now. And so they all began to look up at the sky, waiting to witness their first sunrise with their new friend. But it was then that they realized something. That light wasn't coming from the sun, no. It was coming from a shooting star. And so, all the villagers stopped moving, as they began to marvel at the wonders of this legendary sight. But then, one of the young villagers pointed out, just as the legend said, that they could all make a wish on that star. And so, for that reason, all those villagers gathered in a circle and looked up at the sky. And then, they closed their eyes to make their wish. And well, they all wished for the exact same thing. That being for their wonderful snowman friend, 
to come to life. So, just a few seconds later, when they all opened up their eyes, they watched as the shooting star vanished in the sky. But, once it was gone, all those young villagers were getting rather excited, as he wanted to know if their wish had come true. And so, they all began to run over to their friendly snowman when they saw it. Nothing. The snowman was just standing there, lifeless. Oh, that was disappointing. However, just when those young villagers were about to go back to playing with the snow and the snowman, they saw a flash of golden light in the sky. And so, those villagers, not sure on what that was, all backed away from the snowman, and they headed out into a clearing in that forest. And then, just a few seconds later, they could hear it. It was the movement of some creature in the snow. And those weren't footsteps from a villager. No, they were from something that those villagers had never seen before. And so, they were all huddled together and were absolutely terrified of what was to come. But, for some reason, even though they believed that, they decided to go and investigate. And well, what they would see shocked all of them, as it was a snowman, as he was alive and was moving around. And well, the moment that the now living snowman saw the young villagers, he ran after them. Now, all those villagers were quite scared, and so they all froze in fear. But very quickly, they realized that that snowman, just as they had wished, was calm and peaceful and joyful. And so, very quickly, they all began to play together. And so, over the next few hours, they ran across the snowy fields, climbed on the trees, and hid in the snowy bunkers. It was amazing, as those young villagers had never had more fun than they currently were with that snowman. But, eventually, sunrise came, and with that, all the other villagers got out of their beds. And well, when they came out of their houses to go to the younglings to see what they were doing, they too were amazed with what they saw, as none of them had ever seen a creature like this. And so, some of them were just so perplexed with what they were seeing, that they thought that this snowman was fake, and some even believed that he was a trap. But he wasn't, as he was just a friendly snowman. And so, over the next few weeks, life was rather interesting in that village, as the villagers, in preparation for Christmas, were starting to put up decorations across their village. And the living snowman helped them as he forged paths of snow across the land after all that snow from that original storm had melted. While others were baking gingerbread, not just for the younglings, but also for their new friend. Also, very importantly, that snowman made sure to dedicate his knights to defending the village. As when nightfall arrived, he would patrol the streets of the village along with the Iron Golem. And whenever one of those evil zombies would rise into the village, he would fire hundreds of snowballs at them, sending them far away from the village, and thus keeping the villagers safe from a zombie outbreak. And he was able to do that because he didn't need to sleep. And so all the villagers loved him. As he kept them safe, he made them smile, and he helped all around 
the village. Not to mention his upbeat attitude just inspired all of the villagers to do more for this festive season. And so, all was good. As the snowman was happy and the villagers were happy, nothing could go wrong. Well, that was until one night when everything would change. As it was on that night that a zombie pigman had somehow made its way into the village. Now, the snowman had never seen such a being before. And so, not knowing if this was a threat to his beloved villagers, he attacked. However, as soon as he began to shoot, that pigman locked eyes with him, and he began to chase him with his glowing golden sword. Now, the snowman wasn't faced by this, and just continued to shoot at that monster. But... It wasn't working, as that zombie pigman was getting closer, and closer, and closer, and he wasn't taking any damage, nor was he deterred by any of the snowballs. And so, for that reason, the snowman was forced to run, and luckily, he was able to get away for a little bit. But... It wasn't enough, as that zombie pigman quickly caught up to him, and he struck him with his magical sword. And with that, the snowman was set ablaze, and so he began to yell out in pain, as he was burning to death. Now, this was so loud that all the villagers were alerted of it, and so they all began to run out of their houses so that they could see what had happened. And well, they were horrified with what they saw, and so they ordered the Angolum to kill that beast. Which, very luckily, it was able to do with just one punch. But, by then, the snowman had melted completely, and had become just a puddle of snow and rocks. But, despite that, he could still feel all the pain, and so he continued to scream out for help. Now, all the villagers were just horrified, and so... They just stood there, and they began to think what they could do to save him. However, there was nothing that they could think of that would help him. And so, that snowman just remained in that puddle, screaming out in agonizing pain. But then, after a few minutes, one of the villagers had an idea. And so, he ran into his house, gathered a water bucket, emptied it out, and collected the snowman. Great, they had him contained and could move him now. However, he was still in agonizing pain, and so they really needed to do something more to help him, and they needed to do it very soon. And well, very luckily, it didn't take too long for the villagers to have another idea. And so with that, most of them ran over to their freezers, where they then grabbed as much ice as they could possibly hold, and then they attempted to call that snowman back into a solid. However, that didn't work. And so they then tried to subscribe, but... That also didn't work to save the snowman. And so, they were starting to get rather desperate as they had tried everything that they could think of. And so, because of that, they were all frantically running around in the village, trying to find something else that they could do. But again, there was nothing. And it began to seem as if that snowman was just going to have to live a life of then the suffering and pain within that bucket. But then, one of the villagers had an idea. We could ask the witches. 
all the villagers froze, as they knew what the witches could do, but none of them would ever dare to speak to any of them, as they were the evil traitors of the villages, constantly practicing the dark arts of magic. And so, the villagers were determined to be nowhere near any of them. However, at the same time, they realized that there was nothing else that they could do to help the snowman. And so, for that reason, they were forced to go and get a witch. And so, over the next few days, a group of four villagers rode across the great seas, climbed over a mountain, and dove deep in the murky waters of the swamp. All until they eventually found it, the witch's hut. Now, those few villagers that had gone on this journey were rather scared, as they just didn't want to do this. But they really had to, and so they bravely strolled into that witch's hut, all while the snowman continued to scream out from that bucket. But once they got inside, they saw nothing, as that hut was empty. And so they just stood there, confused at what to do now. When all of a sudden they heard laughing and the witch walked through the front door. I can save your friend, but there is a great cost that will arise if you agree. And so I urge you to make your decision wisely. All the villagers looked at each other and without saying much, they knew what they had to do, and so they all nodded in agreement. And so it shall be. I shall save your friend. And so the snowman was brought back to life. But he was different now, as he had become grey, and was bigger, and he was now partially transparent. Not to mention the fact that all those spells and rituals had awoken a spirit within him that would allow him to gain many powers, such as weather control, flight, and the power to control the feelings of the villagers. It was all very strange. But thankfully, he was alive and well. And so, all the villagers and that snowman went to thank the witch for what she had done. But she had vanished and was nowhere to be seen. That was weird. But still, they were all good and the snowman was good. And so, they decided to just go home. And well, when they arrived in their village, just over a week later, it was Christmas Eve. And so the snowman, seeing that there was still much to be done within the village for Christmas, he leapt up into the air. And then, using his newfound powers, he was able to cover the village in a blanket of thick snow, and was able to cast an aura of joy onto the villagers. Also, he summoned hundreds of amazing presents for all of the young and joyful villagers. And so, that Christmas, he was like a god to them, as because of him, they were given the best Christmas ever. And so, very quickly, legends began to spread about this strange, grey snowman, as they were all very interested in his powers and his story. And given the fact that he was rather grey, and he had died and was brought back to life, he was rather quickly given the name of the Ghostly Snowman, and millions of villagers wanted to meet him. 
Now, when the ghostly snowman saw just how many villagers were interested with him and what he was doing, he rather quickly made the decision to travel the world and to spread joy to all that wanted him. As after all, if it weren't for the selfless acts of the villagers, he wouldn't be alive and in the state that he was in right now. And so, over the next few decades, he visited millions of villages in all biomes, from savannas to tigers to snowy tundras to even the boiling deserts. It didn't matter where they were, as he was determined to meet them all. And with each visit, he would make sure to use his powers to enhance the village, as he would make it snow across the village. And then he would help the villagers make snowmen, and he would show them how to have a snowball fight, and he would teach them everything else that they would need to know about snow. It was amazing. And so everyone loved him, as when he came to a village, everyone had fun and enjoyed themselves, and a lot of them saw snow for the first time in their lives. But those were just the smaller things that he was doing, as when Christmas came, he did a lot more, as he would use his magical powers to make it snow all across the world in every single biome. He would also bring to life hundreds of snowmen and would summon billions of presents in all villages. And so every Christmas with the ghostly snowman around was amazing, and nothing could be done to make them better. As he even casted an aura across this world, in fact, across the entire universe, for any villager or any of their allies to be able to create living yet weaker replicas of him. And those weaker copies would be both loyal and joyful beings. Just as he was, and those beings would be called the Snow Golems. And so everything was good in the world. However, very soon things were going to change, as on the 100th anniversary of his resurrection, the ghostly snowman decided to visit the village where he was created, so that he could see the now elderly villagers that had built him all that time ago. And all was going rather well to begin with, as all those villagers were happy, and he was happy. But then it struck midnight, as it was at that moment that his eyes turned blood red, and they began to glow. Also, his mission of spreading joy and the Christmas spirit across the world to all villagers was removed, and was instead replaced with the mindset of all villagers being parasites on the world. And so, he began to ruthlessly attack them all. And well, he was rather powerful, as the snowballs that he was throwing were made from solid blue ice. And so, he could kill any villager with just one hit. And so, for that reason, in just a few minutes, he had killed every single villager in that village. But he wasn't done just yet, as he still desired the death of all of these villager parasites. And so he leapt up into the air, and then he began to fly over to the next nearest village. And once he arrived, all the villagers were rather excited 
to see him. And so all of them got out of their houses and were just ready to embrace his joyful aura. But then he attacked. Now those villagers were confused. But there was nothing that they could do to stop him. And so, in just a few seconds, he was able to kill them all. Also, once he had done that, he began to grow, and the sky turned red. And so, over the next week, he travelled the world, killing thousands of villagers, instilling fear and chaos onto the world at a time where peace and joy was to be expected. And so, this was a very dark time in the overworld, as the ghostly snowman's conversion into such a feral being had led to just so much suffering for the villagers. And rather quickly, it was approaching Christmas Day. And thus, all the villagers were bracing for a day of ultimate destruction, as on that morning, they assumed that the ghostly snowman was going to unleash his greatest terrors on the world. And well, to begin with, that's precisely what he did, as he summoned giant meteors of coal to crash and destroy the homes of villagers. He also burned every single present of the villagers, and he forced the world into a heat wave, melting all the snow. And so, it was quite a bad day on Christmas. But then, roughly at noon, the ghostly snowman, as he flew across the world, accidentally stepped in the boiling gingerbread batter of one of the villagers. And with that, he was forced to endure a pain unlike anything that he had felt in over a century. And suddenly, he realised what he was doing. But still, he continued on his mission of destruction, as his mind was set on removing all of those parasites. However, he also knew that this was wrong, and so he began to resist the mindset of destruction. And for a brief moment, he returned to his past self of joy and righteousness. However, after a few seconds, he returned to evil. However, after a short yet difficult mental war with himself, he was able to gain control over that curse, and he returned to the moral and good side of himself. Now, he wasn't certain if this would last for too long, nor did he know if he would ever be freed into this state again. And so, for that reason, he made it his mission to ensure that no villager ever suffered his wrath again. And so, for that reason, he ran into a desert and allowed himself and that curse to melt to death. And so, with that, all that remained of him and that curse was just a sapling that began to grow on his arms and the bone from his spine. And so, with that, the world was finally freed from his curse. And so, all the villagers could go back to their peaceful and joyful ways with a Merry Christmas where all villagers were happy, safe, and subscribed. However, the world wasn't free from that curse just yet as that curse remained in just small traces on that sapling and bone. And well, very soon, both of those items would make their way into a river, where they would drift along for the next few days, moving thousands of blocks. And over that, the bone would be damaged significantly, 
to the point where it had become just bone meal. But still, the curse remained on those two items, and eventually, they made their way into a birch forest. Oh, that wasn't so bad, as luckily, no villager nor illager lived there. And so, no one would ever find those cursed items. And so, the world was safe, and everything could remain normal. Well, actually, not quite. As just over 50 years later, on the first day of December, one villager would find those items, and the world would never be the same again. And well, to find out what happened next, you'll need to watch this video. 